There was a lot of new characters thrown at us at the beginning of House of the Dragon, and it can be hard to keep up with the names and backstories. And the King's Small Council has been getting an extra dose of attention. There's been one big notable change from the books. A good change, and that's the most famous man of this era, is Viserys' master of ships. The sea snake, Corlys Valerion, retired his sailing adventure days to be a family man during the reign of the Old King. In the books, he angrily quit his position on the small council after his wife, Rhaenys Targaryen, was passed on as his heir. But in House of the Dragon, he continues to serve the Old King's grandson, Viserys. The Master of Ships is almost a hereditary position for House Valerion, since the concept of a small council formed. The Targaryens rule the skies of Westeros, while the Valerions cover the waters with their powerful fleet, and Corlys is the best sea captain to ever do it. The Master of Ships has the elite job of overlooking the royal fleet, a fleet mostly built by the Valyrians. They advise the king on everyday matters as well, just focus on the fleet especially in times of war. But that's what the small council is. Seven guys, usually highborn lords, advising a king. And Corlys had a little conflict of interest in the first couple episodes of the prequel. The Valyrians' location and wealth allowed them to have huge control over the trade in this part of the world. Prince Crabfeeder was hindering business. So Corlys pushed to start a war with some powerful cities from Essos to clear out the Stepstones. When King Viserys didn't do what he wanted, that's when the Sea Snake called it quits. With him out the door, there are seven seats to cover here. The man running the circus, Hand of the King, is Otto Hightower. A big honor for a noble who isn't even a lord to be given the responsibility of being the king's right-hand man. It's Otto's brother who's running things for House Hightower back in Old Town. But the High Towers are very powerful, and they had a good relationship with the Old King during his long reign, starting from when he was a child. After the Old King's son, Balon's unexpected death, Otto was chosen to replace Prince Balon as Hand of the King during the Old King's mourning. This Balon was Viserys and Daemon's father. The Old King, Jaehaerys, saw so many members of his direct family pass in his later years, and it took a massive toll on him. He was essentially bedridden leaving the newly appointed Hand, Otto, to do all the real work during the old king's final two years. Another instance that validates the book saying, the king eats and the Hand takes the shit. Viserys is being characterized as a much better king in the show than in the books. His small council was always mentioned to do all the real work, similar to Robert Baratheon, Joffrey, and even the Mad King. House the Dragon is showing him to be more involved than I ever would have imagined, but he still likes to avoid serious family matters, particularly ones involving his little shit disturber brother, Daemon. Viserys is indecisive, but he is included in the small council meetings with his seven advisors. Otto's influence is very heavy over the king, borderline manipulative because of how competent he's been over the many years as hand. Otto and Coley's are shown to have a distaste for one another, but it's really the king's brother, Prince Daemon, to have the real heat rivalry with the hand. After Viserys' coronation, one of the first things he did was name Daemon as his master of coin, for no other reason than being his little bro. But the serious position of handling the crown's spending and taxes bored the rogue prince. So after a year, he got offered the position of Master of Laws instead. He only lasted there for six months. Otto begged the king to remove the restless daemon. For good reason, he was not meant to govern. So he was given the city watch to look over as their commander. Essentially the chief of police to the most populated city on the continent. In the show, daemon still had a seat on the small council while thriving in his new violent line of work. Not too sure about the books, this era is heavily detailed in the lore, but not that detailed. House of the Dragon has been filling in some blanks. The men who replaced Daemon were Lord Lyman Beesbury as Master of Coin and Lord Lionel Strong as Master of Laws. These two may not be very flashy, but Lionel Strong does already have his own fanbase amongst viewers. So far, he's been the most sensible advisor. This old coward, Lyman Beesbury, seemed to be Otto's yes man, because he just happens to also hail from the Reach. House Beesbury is a minor house in comparison to some of the great houses, and is sworn to the more powerful high towers. That's why their opinions always were in unison regarding Daemon's antics and the issue with the Stepstones. But the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard during the early years of the show was Sir Ryan Redwine, a legendary old knight. We don't know a lot about his feats aside from being one of the participants in the greatest joust of all time, where neither jouster would fall off their horse. This other older knight, Sir Harold Westerling, has taken Ryan's spot on the small council on the show because Ryan was near death and is in fact dead by the second episode. That's why Rhaenyra had to select a new Kingsguard. Harold's the new Lord Commander. Despite his age, he still looks like someone you don't want to mess with. This other old guy is the Grand Maester Melos. Nothing highborn about him, like most maesters. That's why he doesn't have a last name. As long as you're not a girl, anyone can walk into the Citadel and study to become one. 
The show didn't even bother casting the man that came before him, because Melos isn't elected as the Citadel's Grand Maester until later into Viserys' reign. This position is unique in that way. Maesters all the way in the Citadel, which is located in Old Town, vote in their own representative to be their voice in King's Landing and directly serve the royals as their maester. So their doctor, and historian, and some other things. A lot of connections to the High Towers here. With Corley's gone, a Lannister came in to take his seat as the new master of ships in the third episode, sometime during that two-year time jump. The seemingly competent Thailand Lannister, whose twin brother, born just before him, is the Lord of Castle Rock and Warden of the West. Thailand was always Viserys' master of ships in the books. The Lannisters do have experience with building and running fleets, because Lannisport, their major port city, is on the western coast, which means ironborn raids. You gotta always be ready to send them back to their islands. That last seat on Viserys' small council is supposed to be held by the Master of Whispers, who serves the king as a spy master, like Varys. House of Dragon has been waiting to fill in this position. It's vacant as of the first four episodes, but I don't see any harm in spoiling the name. If you'd rather see it on screen for the first time, you should probably click off this video right about now. With that wedding out of the way, Viserys' Master of Whispers is Larys Strong, good old Lionel Strong's son. Someone I've been looking forward to see on screen since the prequel got that surprising announcement without HBO even bothering to order a pilot episode. I think they always knew this show would be a success. It was just a matter of how many hundreds of millions would it take for them to still profit. We actually see Larys, known as Larys Clubfoot, in the third episode during that huge hunt in the Kingswood. Larys wasn't able to participate with the rest of the Highborns in the hunt because of his crippled leg. He was just born like that. No accident or anything. The Master of Laws brought four of his children with him to King's Landing to serve the king when he was given the seat on the small council. Lionel's other son has already made it in a few minor scenes, once during the hunt, then again in the next episode patrolling the streets as the new commander of the city watch after Prince Damon leaves for the Stepstones. How when Strong doesn't have a seat on the small council or anything like Damon did though? How Strong has been around for a very long time, but were awarded their current seat of the massive castle Harrenhal recently. By the time of the Game of Thrones era, Heron Hall is known to be cursed because of the horrible things that happened to the people here. I'm sure they'll be brought up in House of the Dragon sooner than later. The Strongs have served the Targaryens' quarter for a few generations, so it makes sense that this family hailing from the Riverlands would be given the vacant castle. The prequel is covering a lot of important years in the lore, so that's why we've had some members of the small council come and go, like Otto Hightower, as of the most recent episode. Someone's getting a promotion. I wonder if they're getting paid, because how can you deny a Targaryen king with a job offer when they consider it to be an honor? I won't be remaking this video next week when we get a new council, because the seven right here did all the heavy lifting during Viserys' reign. That's that. I'll see you guys in a few days for the episode 5 discussion that should have some people talking. Thanks for watching.